have work to do. We have work to do. So let's get this show on the road. Hi, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. This is my Brassocatlia or Rincolelio Catlia golf green hair pig. And as it is one of those beautiful pre-spring days out and about here in Southern Spain, there's a lot of activity that you will hear going on in the background. I cannot film in silence on a day like this because everybody's enjoying the beautiful, non-windy, mild spring day that we have. I apologize for any background noise and I hope that some of it I can filter out and everything I can't filter out, well, uh, I hope that it's gonna be okay. Right, golf green hair pig has been in this pot for, let me see, almost three years. A little bit longer than what I would like it to be. Oh, and it's rock hard. Here we go. But the thing with this orchid is that new roots grow when it is in bloom. And uh, yes, do you, I want the blooms? Of course I do. Simply because you grow an orchid to see the pretty blooms. On the other hand, the conundrum is that it actually does start new root growth right at its blooming time. So I had to hold off for this repot until such a time like now, when it's finished blooming, and I hope I can still catch it in time so that I don't destroy the new roots and keep it going and not setting it back or stalling it. I also had to wait a little bit longer with my timing on this repot than I would have liked because we had about two weeks of really cold, cold temperatures that wouldn't have helped the repot at all if I had done it right after blooming. And I just stabbed my pseudobulb. Do not stab your pseudobulbs with your sharp knives. And that is note to self. So I didn't get into it as quickly as I would have liked, which is another factor. So all the new roots that have grown are a little bit longer than I would like, and there will probably be some collateral damage on the new roots, which is a shame. But those very unprecedented cold temperatures, I was not going to risk the repotting at that time. That would be too many factors that I wouldn't be able to control in its recovery after the shock of repot. So I just dropped a bit of lecker. Let me get that so the dog doesn't get it. Right, and that is why I'm doing this a little bit later at a point in time that now I've got some steady temperatures for the next two to three weeks. Even the night temperatures are rising above a minimum. And when I mention cold temperatures, I'm talking around the mark of night temperatures at four degrees Celsius. That means indoors, where this one lives until such a time that outdoors is going to be warm enough for it. It dropped, my dining room area dropped to 14 degrees Celsius, which is two degrees less than I'm accustomed to in the winter to dealing with. And that is not a good thing. So I don't want to, at the time, just think of the roots. I wanted to think of the overall aspects that I needed to take into consideration with a repot of an orchid that I don't want to set back because she's been a reliable bloomer all these years. And after almost three years in the pot, she is rock hard, solid in there. So I'm thinking, yeah, we've got another one of those. Let me see if there's any give at all. Nope. And I don't know at this point what I want to do if I'm going to divide her in the back here. That's a decision I will make when I see a little bit more of what is going on. I have some roots attached inside the pot here. Let's see if we can take care of those. I'm always very diligent at the beginning when you see my repots. I'm always very diligent about everything I see and I try to keep that and somehow salvage it. Once I have her out of the pot, I can then determine if I can be more radical 
or what need what else needs to be done to get her out but it always pays off until I don't know the full picture to be cautious now one thing is for sure she is vigorous on the root front so that's great that gives me hope and if I forfeit a blooming for the following season of 2022 then well at least I've got the health of the orchid in consideration here so for me there's a lot of little factors that I'm thinking of and the ideal situation may not come in place because of what I'm doing now but the health of the orchid is important and you can see she's grown right up against the edge of the pot here so this is high noon the new growths let me show you the new growths that I have coming like there's a nubbin swelling and there's a nubbin swelling these two would stay in the pot but what this lead will do here is going to change all that all of that it's going to come out I don't want it to go there so I'll just keep massaging I want to salvage my pot as well and keep going very very diligently and at a steady pace no rush again it's a beautiful day outside so I'll work my way through this one okay that was not so bad that was not bad at all grabbing the old part of the orchid and she's dislodged there we go fantastic I'll keep all my leka for recycling purposes and let's see what we've got here lots of cleanup to be done well for the time of year this feels nice it feels like we're coming back into the season at least in my area and I can be quite radical now with the cleanup process of this orchid I can also see that I can salvage some roots they're not all going to be history and I can also change the old support for a shiny new one. Yeah, she's eaten the microfiber. Now there's some good roots down there, but I see a lot of other good roots as well. So I'm tempted to just do the rip part, but maybe we can be a little bit more prudent. All right, let's get going. This is now the time where I hedge my bets with what I see the orchid is doing. I'm going to try and be very cautious about the roots that are over here, this side, and any other white roots that I see. But you can see there's a lot of dead in there as well. So I'm going with my two thirds principle. Maintain two thirds of the root ball if possible, but remove the lower part and get into the root ball by cutting into all of it and that is me if I had this in organic media that would be me just cutting and sawing off basically just to give it an idea of course not because of these roots but the lower third of the root ball and that's what I'm going to be doing now one by one I'm not done by no means done this can take another hour of me getting through this root ball one by one and you can see the new roots here and I have a branching root system which helps a lot it gives me a little bit of peace of mind that I can uh, salvage roots and then they will branch and also here are all the old roots and that is a good thing that we're getting in there now because I don't want all this 
tightly packed media now to become a problem inside the pot with regards to no oxygen exchange around the roots whatsoever. So I'll come back when I've cleaned her up and then we'll look and see if I need to divide her. Making progress. And it was faster than I thought because there's a lot of dead roots in here and we're starting from not scratch, I've got more to work with than I had when I got her, but this is a rejuvenation. So when I saw that that was the case, I didn't have to be so careful with regards to what am I taking out, where do I have to watch out for, with, for new roots or something like that. So let me show you once I clean a little bit of the debris off, what I see, what I think, and we are going to do a rhizome cut for sure. So almost three years in that pot. I'm very pleased to say that it is a vigorous root system because that will help me for the future now. I went in and really tried to get every Lekka bead out, even though it is inorganic media, because I'm going to take care of all these dead roots now. First, we're gonna do the rhizome cut because that will take care of a lot of roots as well. And then I'll be left with probably just the front parts right here, which should be sufficient for half the orchid. The back part, once we've done that, is going to be interesting in its own right to see if it has any eyes or if it has just, I wouldn't say rotted, but you know, spent itself. So let me see, I'm going right into, that's the plan anyway, right into there. But if there's still lecker beads, then that's not going to be very productive with my secateurs. What I think about this orchid is that she probably will not bloom next year. Or if she blooms, then it will be not with two blooms like she did this year. It's not necessarily a setback, but she has to build, well, continue to build her new root system, plus, you know, develop a new growth, which will only produce new roots once she blooms, or at such a time of the year that new roots grow, whether she's bloomed or not. Okay, I've removed all the Lekka that's in my way. And I will be trying to grow on this second piece right here. If we have anything to grow on, that is. But all the roots are... No, maybe not. No, that is a root from the front, I believe. We shall see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. So if somebody is uh, saying or thinking that um, Lekka self-watering inorganic is the one and done, unless you are prepared to just increase the pot size from pot to pot and just fill media around it, that can be a one and done. But you will always have some cattleyas that dump their roots, regardless of how you take care of them or how you grow them. It's just in their nature to dump roots. And here we have one that does just that. It dumps roots. Are you... No, you were from the old piece. So there's a lot. All of this back here is dead. I have an eye, but it doesn't look, yeah, no, that eye disintegrated. And we have to get ourselves a bottle, which I won't do in this video, but I will have a bottle with my extractor fan material in the bottom 
and water. Is this a root that belongs to the back piece? That would be interesting. Let's go with what we can see and what we know. There is an eye. And here is something. Something on the root front. Okay, so let's just be a little bit more prudent back here. Let's not go all ninja on this. So yeah, as I was saying, inorganic, be mindful that there is still maintenance to be done. Regardless of how you grow, if you grow inorganic, in my case it is, Lekka was self-watering in this with, for this orchid. But if you want to have a healthy environment for the roots, and as they grow, they start to intertwine with the media, there is an oxygen lockout that happens. So every once in a while, and I always give myself, oh my goodness, if I've left a pot three, for three years, it's already too long in that pot. But if I say two years, two and a half years to rejuvenate a root ball, not always is it this radical. It can be based again on the orchid, but not always is it this radical, but it's definitely necessary. So let's give that another spray. Let's have a look at it. I'll be applying some cinnamon shortly. It's a bit black around the edge, but I don't think that is a problem. That's just an old rhizome syndrome. Interesting that it has some roots back here, whether they are from the front bit, I don't know. But I'm going to preserve them anyway. And you don't need to see me cleaning out all of this in here, but I'm going to clean it up as well as I can to get a real good understanding of what am I seeing on the root front. This one is kinked. We can take that off. Ah, uh, here we go. Yeah, no, this was one big piece from the front part. All right. As I was thinking, man, if this has roots in the back, I'm going to pot it up, but no. Nope. Bottle it is. It's going in a bottle, so we'll clean that up. Let's have a look at the main piece, and I will be cleaning this piece up as well. Get all of that old root system out. Cinnamon and rejuvenate. And then it can go back into its old pot, which is great. At least for me, that's great because I can, I know my space situation and it doesn't change it for me then. Fabulous. So I'm going to, even though it's a little bit too soon, because I will be spraying her with water again, I'm already going to start working on the cuts with the cinnamon and I spray my paintbrush with alcohol so that it grabs. But I'm doing this once and I'm going to repeat afterwards again just to start the process of drying everything out. A little bit of a double whammy on this one. No other reason except that it is convenient at this point in time. And then I shall now focus on cleaning this up as best as possible. And you can see how dirty my leka is now with all the roots. This is going to be fun to get cleaned up as well and recycled. I'm going to continue working the leka out and get a proper, proper visual on what else I can remove from here. And if you're concerned about the cinnamon powder now landing on fresh roots, I'm not because I'm working with so much water that I'm not worried about any desiccation whatsoever. There are no side effects. What I'm doing now is just getting the components and the 
benefits of the cinnamon into that fresh cut while I work around the roots here. And if anything were to drop, it's they're so wet, everything around it, there will be no hazardous desiccation going on at all. And this is what I'll be doing for the next probably 40 minutes because it really is a one by one diligent process. On the homeward stretch, whoopee. Because I'm losing the nice warmish air. So I have lost an eye back here. I have one that might make it over here. And the uh, cinnamon has been applied for a second time and a last time for now. And I have a pretty nice green looking eye right here. So I've also sprayed the back end here down with hydrogen peroxide because this black here, although it's firm, you never know. So this one, we're going to deal with pronto. Make sure I keep the cinnamon up because it's going into one of these little bottles with some extractor fan material on the bottom as my humidity source, supply, make sure that it's touching those little wells right at the bottom of the bottle. And then fill her up just to the wells so that the extractor fan material has access to that water and provides me with humidity. Right. And then we shall see how this one progresses. There we go. Where is the cut? Got to make sure that stays away from whatever wet might be. Where is the green eye? We come closer. So here's the cut. Make sure that stays dry. Here's the eye in there. I hope you can see that. That green eye that I would like to encourage. Okay, this one is done. And for the cut that's going to be potted up, Considering I normally like to take only a third of the root ball off, this is carnage. So yeah, I am left with probably an eighth, if that. <laughs> but it, it's, it's gonna be fine. The only thing that of course now is the orchid has to start basically from scratch and we shall see how she develops with, on the new growth front. I am sure that she will develop. I might not get as big a growth as I did this year. However, she is going to stay healthy. And that is the whole point of seeing what is in the pot and then making your decisions accordingly. Right, now, first of all, we need a new support. A nice new shiny one for her. Everything that is still with metal in it is from a while ago when I first got these orchids. And that shows me how long they've been in the pot. Because I, I do not put any potting dates or anything like that on my labels. My labels are one and done. I go by what I see is happening in the pot as I water, as I flush, because sometimes it doesn't take two years and the orchid needs to be addressed. Sometimes it takes one year and then I can just up pot. So I don't put dates on my labels. I pretty much have, I have some notes, but I don't even put repotting dates on those because I feel I could get a bit complacent thinking, yeah, nah, I did that a year ago, no issues, and then I stopped paying attention. That is my fear. So I make sure that I just watch my orchids and have them under supervision regarding what to do, when to repot, what timing is right for when. Okay, let's do this. I've washed the pot out, which is great. I have not reused the old microfibers because they were pretty much consumed by roots. So they're gonna need a special cleaning 
as well. Then I will put the microfibers, the old ones, into bleach. Let them soak. And after bleaching them, I will put them in the washer. And eventually, just have them ready to go for next uses. So these microfibers that I have here are just strands from an old mop that I've cut in half. Not old, sorry. I bought a new mop to cut in half. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they are old in my case because these are recycled microfibers right here. Let's do our little loop, raise it up a bit so that we can get some lecker in and underneath so that I can get the maximum wicking effect. My support goes in. I usually train my orchids and their growth depending on the light, but I for these tall orchids, and especially now she's going to be really wobbly in the pot, I always put in a support for eventualities if I need to pull a new growth in towards the in middle of the pot, then I have this for eventualities. Sometimes even the blooms don't present themselves nicely, so it's there if I need it to be. All right, let's fill her up. Let's get this support looking a little bit straight. There we go. One. And now I'm just going to fiddle to bring the microfiber up in and around the lecker to have raise the wicking potential more towards the middle of the pot as I have an extremely dry environment in the hottest parts of the year and I have a dry top layer to contend with. I just make my life a little bit easier by using the loop to increase my wicking ratio. Now let's get her in. I want to see if the back of this division has an eye. Because if it does, then the position of the orchid is paramount in the pot and I can't push her all the way to the back. But I'm seeing everything that could be growing moving into this direction. So I can back her up and I should be okay. All right. If we have old root debris falling in, then make sure to get that out just to be on the safe side. So I'm going to push her to the as far back as I can. Give her plenty of space in the front. And right now she's a little bit lower in the pot than I will normally have her. I'm going to do this and secure her position by putting Lekka right around the front to stabilize her and help me out because I haven't developed the third arm. So I'm just putting this out in the front here to help me out. And then we shall start to position her. Actually, I like the height of this. This is not so bad because I was actually contemplate, contemplating pulling her up a little bit higher, but no, I like this. This is good. It'll also be really good for when the hot winds come, that she is a little bit lower, even though she's not a climber per se, but I like the, the fact that she can have a little bit more humidity around the base for the summers. Are you straight? Yeah, you're looking good, looking good take you out. All right, let me get some wire that I had from before. Now this would appear to be quite the loose tie, but because I do have a little bulk of root to help her out and stay, keep her stable, that's going to be absolutely fine for me. Her new roots had already started growing. I am now banking on the fact that she is going to branch those roots. And that is why I'm not going to be tying and wiring more than what I'm doing right now. Because I am not expecting any more new roots to come out 
of the front here. And that is the thing about this orchid, throwing out new roots right when she starts to push her bud from the sheath. And then the conundrum starts. She's about to bloom, you want to see the bloom. But I think I mentioned that right at the beginning, so I'm not going to repeat myself. And let me get one more lecker bead wedged in here, not touching the rhizome, because I don't want the wet now to penetrate into that rhizome. And we are good to go. Pending the label. And pending putting in the just plain RO water. I might need a second wire. Yeah, I was thinking a little bit too positively. And for now, she's going to be living inside, seeing as my temperatures are warming up outdoors, but because of the current repot, I'm going in the radical way of repot. She is going to go inside where I can baby her a little bit more with temperate temperatures and not move her. Going on the top shelf where there's lots of blurple lights, right by the blurple to encourage the growth and then just leave her be and not move her. Now, here's the thing uh, I was mentioning right at the beginning before I unpotted her, she had an hour of calcium, magnesium and seaweed soak at about 100 parts per million just to get her ready for this repot. Other than that, now it's just plain RO water because whatever she has soaked up, she soaked up prior. So yes, we shall see. Maybe I'm going to have a successful division and maybe I won't get blooms at the end of this season, but at least the orchid will be healthy. And for me, that's very, very important when it comes to golf green hair pig. I hope that this video was useful. I appreciate if you stayed all the way to the end. If you have any questions regarding this orchid, I did a care collab video on her. I will leave that link in the description or put up a card. Other than that, let me know in, your com in the comments below what you feel, what you think, any questions that I did not cover while doing this repot. I'll be very, very happy to answer. So thank you very, very much for your time. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Take care and stay safe, please. Bye.